Hello there and welcome to another day of landscape photography. But as you can see, with a little bit of a twist today, because instead of getting out in the car and on foot, I am out on my mountain bike and I'm very excited about the day. There's gonna be lots of photography, a bit of biking, and I really can't wait for you to see this. Before we get into it though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, then make your next move with Squarespace. So I mentioned on the video last week that I get frustrated with how reliant on a car we are to do landscape photography. And I mentioned that a mountain bike might be the key to solving that. I got a lot of positive comments back about people that already do that. So I wanted to give it a go. This is my bike. It is a white 905. I bought it as a bit of a leaving gift to myself when I left the police. I've had it for sort of just over a year now and I haven't been out on it as much as I should do. So I'm trying to marry the two together to see if it's something I can do more often. But I just wanted to quickly show you the bike before we get on the, on the trail. Okay, we're here to do some photography, so let's go and find some spots in the beautiful North Yorkshire. I love this place, it's where I'm from, uh, and I'm excited to explore around here today on the bike in this beautiful weather. Let's go. Right, so I'm set up for my first shot of the day and it is classically not the best time to do landscape photography. It's probably about half past two. The sun is high in the sky in the middle of spring. Not your ideal landscape photography conditions, but I'm going to make the best of it and do some black and white photography because I think that can work really, really well in the middle of the day when you have those big contrasts between the highlights and the shadows. And that's what I'm going to try and do with this image. Now, one of the great things about coming out on a bike is that you just cover so much more ground than you would normally when you're out on foot. I've actually gone the wrong way, but what it's done is revealed this scene behind me here of Rosby Topping in a slightly different way to, to how I've seen it before. And what really caught my eye and where I think black and white will work really well for this image is this sort of field here that it is sort of behind me in the foreground of the image has is dotted with these really beautiful small trees with some of those beautiful spring leaves on there so they've got a really nice shape and a really nice colour to them even though I'm going to remove that but the shape and the tone look great. I've then got that very sort of sugarloaf type peak of rosemary topping and then I have various sort of cuts in the landscape that act as lines sort of spiraling its way up to Rosby Topping, which look, just looks really, really good in the composition. I've then got a thin layer of dotted clouds just above the horizon. And by using the 7200 lens, I'm getting in a bit closer to fill my frame above the top line of the rule of thirds with those clouds. And when we convert that to black and white, it just is going to look great. That sort of classic dark blue contrasted against those nice bright white clouds. Now I also want to accentuate that even more and use a polarizing filter to bring out that saturation, to bring out that contrast in the sky and to remove a little bit of the haze that's in the scene as well. So I have my circular polarizer here however it's the wrong size because I'm carrying as little as possible today with riding the bike. So I've got to carry camera gear. I've got to carry vlogging gear to film it. I've then got to carry some bike gear. I've already had a mechanical failure with my bike or shoot one of my shoes today. So I've had to bring tools to keep myself going on the bike as you normally do. So I'm carrying quite a lot today. So space is a minimum. I've left my 24 to 70 at home. I've left most of my filters, but I have brought 
the 77 millimeter circular polarizer. So all I'm going to do when I, when I take this shot is get the two second timer on, get it focused. I'm focusing just onto rosemary topping itself, set the two second timer up and then just put it across the front like that. I know roughly where I want to have it to get the effect. So I'm focused in, I'm at F11 because nothing is particularly close to me. I'll get everything in focus at F11. 1 80th of a second, which is exposed for the filter being, being on there. Two second timer, I'm all set to go. Just hit that two second timer, hold that across and like that. Let's do that once more just in case. Two second timer, across the front, hands out of the way. And there we go, let's have a look at that. That looks really good. I think that'll be nice with a bit of moody, not moody, but ag aggressive contrast in post-production. I think that's going to look really, really good in these bright, sunny conditions. I will probably shoot that again once I've got another free hand to just keep the sun off the front of the lens so I don't get any flare. But yeah, really, really, one more look. Yeah, really happy with that. The clouds look great. Yeah, very nice. Right, I'm into my second spot of the day now, and I absolutely love the spots that surround Rosemary Topping because it's my local area. I was born and raised around here and I like to come back over and over and over again to shoot these scenes. I'm going to this time with this shot do it black and white again because I talked about wanting to do more black and white on the Photo Nerds podcast the other day and it's still, the sun is still really high in the sky and I think black and white is going to work again for this. I'm just going to turn around into the wind for a minute but you can see Rosemary topping just over my shoulder there. And some of this stunning gorse. The gorse has been absolutely beautiful this year. However, so far, I've struggled to make gorse look good in an image. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the relationship between the yellow and the green that doesn't particularly work in a photograph, or there's just so much fine detail in there that it causes the cameras an issue. I, I just don't know but I haven't managed to figure out how to make gorse work in an image. And because of that, I'm not too upset that I'm gonna turn this beautiful yellow color into black and white. But the composition for this image, I have that rock or that cliff there to the right hand side. That kind of leads you around to Rosebury Topping and then you've got all the detail of the fields and stuff. This side, very classic composition. It's not anything particularly original from me, but I just wanted to try and get it in black and white. It's a spot I love. It's a spot we'll be visiting on my North York Moors and the Yorkshire Coast Tour in September. And by then, all this heather that you can see here will be in full bloom. So I'm very excited about that too. I'll put a link about that down below for you to check out. My hair is very crazy today, having had a helmet on and got a bit sweaty. So anyway, I have settings wise, I am at F11. I just want to pull out as much detail out of this scene as possible because there are a few nice looking clouds in there which will work really well. I want to have that nice dark sky with the bright white cloud again, similar to the last shot. So F11, ISO 400 because I want to get the shutter speed up to one one hundredth of a second because a lot of these trees I'm moving around in this strong wind now and I want to freeze those as much as possible. I think if I wait for a lull in the wind, one one hundredth of a second will be enough. I've got the circular polarizer on again just to bring those clouds out and cut through some of the haze a little bit. And I'm on the two second timer. I think I'm pretty much ready to shoot. Let's go one, two, bang, bracketed shots, two stops either side. I'm doing it in mono again on the back of the camera. That looks nice. Yeah, those clouds look really good. Something nice and black and white in my portfolio from this scene. So I've got this scene in lots of different conditions, lots of different seasons, black and white, colour, and I want to keep coming back. I'm just enjoying my day on my bike. So it's time to get back on and go for another ride.
Right, I'm into my last location of the day. And unfortunately, a big bank of cloud has come across. So I think what I'm gonna do is settle for a shot with the bike. Anyway, you've seen me shoot this scene on a number of occasions before. So I think what we'll do is we'll head back to the studio and edit those two black and white images that I've taken earlier in the day because I think you'll get more out of that. Uh, and also, I'm thirsty, I'm cold, I'm tired, my back hurts, I've been on the bike all day, so I'm ready for a shower and a bit of food. So, see you in a sec, back in the office. Right, so back in the office. I think this is gonna be a pretty interesting edit, so let's get straight in to the computer and take a look. Right, so we're straight into Adobe Lightroom. These are the images that I've taken. This one we're gonna focus on. I'll talk about this one briefly. We'll just ignore those two with the bike for now. I do go through the full post-processing part of the photography process in my Landscape Photography Masterclass. I'd love it if you check that out. I'll put a link down below for you, or you can go to firstmanphotography.com slash masterclass, and it takes you through the entire landscape photography process from planning right through to the final print and it's seven hours of brand new content so hit the link down below to check that out but let's have a look at these couple of black and white post-processing tips here right i'm going to start with this one uh, let's go into the develop module on that one one of the things i was going to talk about but kind of got distracted from the bike riding is that when you do black and white landscapes if you have a lot of uh, shrubbery or undergrowth in your picture then it can become very busy and I should have taken my own advice because I didn't do it with this one so if I reset this one that's the composition that I've taken I love the composition the composition is just spot on but with all this gorse bush and all this down here including some of these shadows which you can bring up in post but when we turn it black and white it just gets very very busy and the image just doesn't work overall. So I've had to pretty much rescue that with a crop. And I'm actually really ha quite happy still with the final image, but I should have shot it like this at the scene, which I didn't. Right, let's go to this one here, which I'm much happier with overall. So bringing in the image into Lightroom, it's still in color because converting it into black and white at the scene in the camera is non-destructive. When you input it into Lightroom, it has the color version still. We have some presets over on the left-hand side here. So if you just roll over them, you can see that that's adding a preset, a sepia tone, a selenium tone, an infrared one, which looks quite cool. Uh, and so you've got all those presets as, that you can use as a starting point. I've also got these user presets, which you get free with the masterclass. Uh, I quite liked the look of the cinematic one on this one with that sort of bluey, greeny cinematic tinge, and it makes the trees look really good as well but we're going to do it all manually today. So we're going to start just by hitting black and white because that's what we want. And it'll just, it'll zero all of the black and white mix out here uh, when you initially click that. You can go ahead and hit the auto button to see what that does, but generally it's not doing what I want. So we're going to undo that. Uh, so the black and white mix here, when you adjust these sliders, it essentially changes the luminance or brightness of that particular color. So I want to bring the blue down because I want to darken that sky. So let's just bring that blue down and you can see it starts to darken the blues in the image. If we go the other way, it makes them bright. But I want to have that slightly darker sky. So I'm going to go down to somewhere like that because I'm also going to draw a gradient in. Let's do that next, in fact. Let's draw that gradient in to darken that sky off a touch more somewhere around there. And we'll just reduce it by about a stop, I think. I'll bring the highlights down a touch. And then I want to bring the, the whites are already down actually, that, that looks about right for me. So I'm gonna bring the blacks down even more as well to darken that sky off. I'm then gonna bring in the range mask and do luminance. And I just want to recover the area of this rosemary topping, which has gone dark. So I'm not even gonna bother clicking the luminance. I'm just gonna drag that up till it looks about right. I'm just gonna bring the exposure up a touch overall. And then I wanna add in some contrast. You can add lots of contrast in to a black and white image because you don't need to worry about uh, oversaturating a particular color. So I'm just gonna go up to about, about 20 on there and then I'm gonna bring more contrast in using the black and the white. I'm gonna up the shadows though as well, just a touch, uh, actually more than a touch, to bring the detail out of the foreground. And then I want to bring the whites up, just using the histogram up here to see when I get exact white in. And then I want to increase the blacks again. I want to use as much of that black and white range as I can without a 
affecting the image. So just bring that blacks down by about 25. And I think that's starting to look really, really good. What I was going for in the image with the black and white was just getting the detail out of these trees because I think they look great dotted all across that foreground. Even in this image, although it's not too busy, see this undergrowth here in the corner? That does start to get very busy where you just get that random bits of contrast all over and it doesn't look so great. But the image as a whole, I'm really, really happy with it. Just come down here to get that black and white mix correct now. So I think we'll, the, the sky looks about right to me now. I, I could darken it off even more to give it an ultra dramatic feel, but I want to go for a slightly more natural look. And I think that works at around 40, something like that. You still get some a little bit of that haze in there, but the clouds look great. I want to back the yellows off a bit because there's a lot of yellow in that foreground. So I'm just going to back those off a bit to try and just bring the trees out. Let's see what the orange slider does. So actually, if I bring that orange slider up, that brightness increases a bit and it's just bringing those trees out even more. Let's keep going to about there. You can see all the detail in that foreground. Those trees pop out, rosemary topping looks great and the clouds look amazing as well with that sky. I think that's a really nice image. Just one thing that I always do to finish off my black and white images is to give a slightly cooler tone, to put a blue tone over the, the, the image. So just coming down to the split turning here, I've got a standard one that I use for my black and whites if I'm not using the Nick collection, and that is to go to 235, which is uh, a blue color on both. I'm, I'm not going to do split toning. I want to add the same tone to the highlights and the shadows. So I'll go to 235 for both. For the saturation of the highlights, I'm just going to go to 18, and then I want to go to 11 for the shadows. And that's a preset I use pretty much for this all the time. I might adjust the saturation a bit, but 235 for the highlights and the shadows, I think gives that overall really nice, cooler tone to my images. And when you see all my black and white images with that similar or same tone on it, they work really well together. So I'm really happy with that image. Yeah, very happy indeed. So stick around till the end for a couple of outtakes from that ride, but this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today, and then if you like the website that you create, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, out. <laughs>